Welcome to a brand new section and we're going to continue working with our library and working with design patterns but our main focus is going to be working with time and JavaScript. JavaScript and time go well together but it could become very very quickly not very efficient when you're working directly with the set interval. So to solve that we want to create a time manager. And as we do that, we're going to explore the singleton design pattern that was created really for cases where you want to create something that will only be instantiated once. We're going to look at how to work with time in JavaScript, and in the process, we're going to build a single design pattern and integrate it into our library. So let's get started with the first lecture. In the first lecture, we're going to be creating that core singleton and explain what a singleton really is. And as we said, a singleton is basically a scenario where you want to make sure that something only happens once and not more than that. In JavaScript, it's a little bit different, but we're going to see how to do it in JavaScript and when do we want to use it in JavaScript. In general, the creation process, which we're going to do right now, is completely different than the creation process in languages where there's such a thing as public and private properties. While in JavaScript there isn't, so there's more steps involved. But lucky for us, we already learned a lot about how to create private variables in JavaScript that will help us through this process. All right, let's get started with this section. And what I want to do is I want to create a singleton. And I want to explain to you first why and what it is even. So. The reason why we want to create a singleton is in scenarios where we only want one instance of it. And I'm going to go ahead and, and show you, for example, a case. So I'm going to go ahead right underneath all of the different adopters that we've created and just before the instantiation of our code. And what I want to do, and it's roughly around line 141. What I really want to do is I want to create a ticker. And the idea here is really I want to create basically a way for our application to have a timer without using directly set interval. As many of you know, set interval and working directly with time in JavaScript tend to be dangerous because you could by mistake create a memory leak. So we really want to create a secure way to create intervals. We're not going to complete a full ticker, but that's going to be up to you to complete it. But we're going to create a rough ticker that will work by the end of this section. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and very strategically create another anonymous function that self instantiates. Remember that big, big function that we're putting everything inside. So it's going to be very similar to that big structure. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a function. It's not going to have a name. I'm going to open and close it and it's going to have an anonymous name as we assign it to the ticker. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open and close around bracket around it and then instantiate it. Literally executing that function and making sure that whatever is returned to there will come back into our ticker. Now, the idea here is basically to create that a way for us to create private methods. If you recall, just like when we created not the adopters, but when we were creating the facade, remember that we created the facade as a function. And inside of that function, we placed all of the different properties and methods and elements that we wanted to basically hide away from the user. And then we only returned the actual things that we want the user to have access to. And that way, we avoided the need to have any global variables. The idea here is very similar. So as we create our singleton, our singleton is going to work very similarly to the way a query facade worked, but only be able to create more than one instance. So let's go ahead and continue. So in our sudo environment right here, we could go ahead and start creating our structures. And I'm going to go ahead and just create here a variable and I'm going to call it instance. And the idea here is to have basically one instance to the element that we're creating and not more than that. I'm going to go ahead and create another function. And really this function could be any name that I'm going to call it just create because with it, we're going to create our singleton or our object or our element that we actually want to work with. And now inside of this create zone, I'm going to basically create all of the different properties and methods. All of the private ones, basically creating all the elements that I want to create. 
Once I've done that, I could then instantiate our application and literally just go ahead and return in this create method what we actually want to return. So if I'm going to go ahead here, and this is going to be a little bit generic in this lesson, but don't worry because in the following lecture, we're going to go ahead and actually implement this. But what I'm going to do basically inside of our structure here is we're going to basically return an object and in that object define the different things that we want to return. So let's go ahead and think what type of things would we definitely want to return for an interval. And in our case, probably something that we'd want to do is add a ticker or I'm just going to call it add. And for the add method, I'm just going to refer it to the method that we're going to create inside of here, which is going to be called add. And I'm going to go ahead here and I'll add the actual signature of this method as we create it. But when you think about it, the signature would probably be an interval of how often does it happen. Interval. It's also going to have how many times it happens. And it's also going to have a callback method. Last but not least, we could add a name or not. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to add a name, but really is really so to be able to identify what is the name of that interval. So then later on, if we want to create also a remove method, enabling us to remove a different, a specific callback, we would have a name for it. All right, so we created the add method. There's really nothing inside of here, but what we did is we created a function that's called create that stores inside of it all these different methods. That means nothing else but this function has access to it or the object that we're sending through will have access to the different methods that we decide to send with it. Next step that we want to do once we've created the structure is we also want to return to the create itself. What does the create itself return? In our case, the create itself returns this, but what does the actual instance return? So in our case, this anonymous function, what do we return from that anonymous function? What's actually going to be inside of this ticker area? In this case, what we really want to do is we want to return a new object. And that object is going to have a property that's called get instance. Now get instance is just a common name, which is not mandatory, but it's a common name in a lot of other programming languages that is related to a singleton. So whenever someone sees get instance, they know it's a singleton. Now, what does this function actually return? We're going to ask if instance, if there is an instance of that variable was defined already, then go ahead and return that element. If it is not, Let's go ahead and create it. So I'm going to create that instance and I'm going to set its value to be the value that returns from that creation, which is basically this add element. Once we know that it's created, I could go ahead and return the return that instance. Now it's a very theoretical sample right now, but in the next lecture, we're going to take it to the next level, working within the structure and actually starting to build it out. As you can see, if I just recap this just for a second here, it's a little bit theoretical, nothing we could really see it to at the moment. We have your basically a variable that is called ticker. Our variable ticker right now is in the global scope. To be able to prevent that, I'm going to go ahead and just set the words var before it like we would do to any variable. If we don't do that, then our ticker will be part of the global scope, kind of defeating the whole point of hiding everything inside of our library that we've been doing so far. It's not in the global scope because we're hiding it everything inside of that, that scope that we've created of this function. So it's inside of our zone, inside of our access of our application. Only our application has access to it. All right. We created an anonymous function for it as well that is self-triggering, which means anything inside of there won't be available to anything but this specific ticker. Inside of there, inside of that function, we created a variable that's called instance. We also created a function that will store all the different properties and methods of our singleton. We then also return the different properties and methods. Really, in this case, it's functions that are inside of a different function, and we're wrapping them up inside of an object, protecting them, saying, okay, this is public and all the rest is private, the same way that we did with the facade. The only difference here is that split in the steps where we also return to that element itself when we're creating that ticker a get instance property. And only when the get instance method really is called, then that method will create our application really starting our timer but until that get instance is called no timer is started
So the idea behind here is basically we're slowing down the need to, if we have an interval, and this interval is going to run once a second, but it's only going to run once in a specific point in time. And we don't want to overload our system. So what we're doing here is we're preparing all the legwork so when the moment comes and the user goes and creates, and I'm just going to go ahead here right under this ticker, and the user goes to ticker and says, get instance, and he creates that instance, only in this point, when I created that instance, the actual object or group of methods are now ready and accessible and any other action that I created would start. You don't want to overuse this. It's really important not to use singletons too much because once you get it, you many people love it and they overuse it. But the problem with singletons is that they could create a code that is very, very hard to maintain and manage. But it is a really powerful solution in a scenario such as this one, where we know there will always be only one interval, there's only one structure, we don't want to mix things up, we don't want different objects and classes and libraries and elements having different intervals, we have only one global interval, we're keeping it very generic, very appropriate, we're not going inside and manipulating an object directly, we're keeping it relatively anonymous, where this object is going to be basically a utility object, that is really the position and the only place where you'd want to create a singleton. In this lecture, we created the core singleton pattern and seen how to work with it. We're far from over with it because we're going to be using this pattern throughout the section. And in the next lecture, we're going to go ahead and actually see how do we create the logic inside of that constructor or creator, that method. What are we going to put inside there? And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next lecture.